In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Greetings, Living the Word friends. Today we commemorate St. Hugh of Grenoble, a beacon of reform and piety in the Church. Appointed Bishop of Grenoble, he tirelessly worked to revitalize his diocese's spiritual life. Overcoming challenges with resilience, he supported the founding of the Carthusian Order alongside St. Bruno, marking a key chapter in monastic history. St. Hugh's dedication to his episcopal duties, even after a contemplative retreat at Chaise Dieu Abbey, inspires us with his unyielding commitment to faith and duty. As we remember him on April 1st, let's be inspired by his steadfastness to live out our own faith with equal fervor and conviction. St. Hugh of Grenoble, a significant figure in the Roman Catholic Church, was renowned for his piety and reformative actions. His life is a remarkable story of devotion, struggle, and influence, deeply intertwined with the medieval religious landscape. Hugh was born around 1053 in the Dauphiny region of France. His upbringing was marked by a strong religious influence, which shaped his spiritual life from a young age. He was known for his intellect and piety, qualities that paved his way to becoming a canon of the cathedral in Valence. In 1080, a pivotal moment occurred in Hugh's life. While he was attending a synod in Avignon, his exemplary character and reputation led to his appointment as the Bishop of Grenoble. This role, however, was not without its challenges. Upon assuming his role as bishop, Hugh embarked on a vigorous mission to reform the Diocese of Grenoble. His focus was on rectifying the lax morals and discipline of the clergy and faithful. After initiating reforms in the diocese, Hugh faced considerable resistance. His efforts to instill discipline and moral integrity among the clergy and lady were met with opposition, and this resistance significantly impacted his spirit and resolve. Disheartened, Hugh sought refuge in the monastic life, which he found at Chaise Dieu Abbey. This abbey was a Benedictine monastery known for its adherence to monastic discipline and piety. Hugh's retreat to the abbey wasn't merely an escape from his troubles. It was a spiritual journey seeking clarity, peace, and a reconnection with his inner religious fervor. The monastic environment provided him with solitude and community that were conducive to deep contemplation and prayer. Hugh's time at Chaise Dieu Abbey, however, was not destined to be a permanent chapter in his life. Pope St. Gregory VII, who was leading the church during a time of significant reform and challenge, recognized Hugh's value as a bishop and a reformer. The Pope saw in Hugh a kindred spirit, someone committed to the revitalization of the church and the spiritual welfare of its members. Understanding the necessity of Hugh's presence in Grenoble, Pope St. Gregory VII issued a directive for Hugh to return to his episcopal duties. This command was more than an administrative order. It was a recognition of Hugh's spiritual leadership and his potential to effect meaningful change within the church. Hugh's return to Grenoble marked a renewed phase in his episcopacy. With the Pope's support and his own renewed spirit, Hugh resumed his efforts to reform his diocese. This return wasn't just a physical journey back to Grenoble, it symbolized a spiritual resurrection, a recommitment to his vocation, and a reinvigorated approach to his mission. In this phase of his life, Hugh continued his reformative work with renewed vigor and a clearer vision. His experiences at Chase Dieu deepened his understanding of spiritual leadership and fortified his resolve to lead his diocese with integrity and devotion. One of Hugh's most significant contributions was his support of St. Bruno, the founder of the Carthusian Order. Hugh provided St. Bruno with a piece of land in the mountains of his diocese, where the Grande Chartreuse Monastery was established. This act played a crucial role in the founding of the Carthusian Order, a contemplative monastic community. St. Hugh of Grenoble passed away on April 1, 1132. His death marked the end of an era of significant religious impact in the region. He was canonized by Pope Innocent II, a testament to his sanctity and lasting influence on the Church. While specific miracles attributed to St. Hu during his lifetime are not extensively documented, his life itself was considered a testament to living a miracle of faith and reform. His patronage extends to his association with St. Bruno and the Carthusian Order, reflecting his commitment to monastic and spiritual life. St. Hugh's canonization by Pope Innocent II further solidified his status as a venerated saint in the Catholic Church. This recognition is not only a testament to his life's work, but also serves as an inspiration for the faithful, symbolizing the power of commitment to religious reform and personal piety. St. Hugh of Grenoble's life story is a compelling narrative of religious dedication, 
marked by his efforts to reform the church, support monastic life, and navigate the challenges of his time. His legacy continues to inspire those in the religious and spiritual realms. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Heavenly Father, we turn to you in the spirit of St. Hugh of Grenoble, seeking guidance on our spiritual journey. Just as St. Hugh devoted his life to your service, reforming with courage and aiding in the founding of monastic life, inspire us to live with unwavering faith and commitment to your word. Grant us the strength to face challenges with resilience as St. Hugh did, and to seek always the path of righteousness. Through his intercession, help us to cultivate a heart of service and a soul dedicated to your glory. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.